The Sharp Edge on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Mazek Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to The Sharp Edge. Today I'm down in Norfolk County catching up with Mazik's agronomist, Henry Prinzen. Henry, how's it going? It's going great, Bern. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. Hey, I want to talk soybeans today. We are at a Mazik's research trial here, and I want to talk about how we can manage and select soybean varieties. And, uh, you know, we talk a lot about corn, and we talk about those, those yield elements, and a lot of it's about test weight and kernel weight. But when it comes to soybeans, it's a different conversation, right? Yeah, Bern, like, that's a great example, right? We talk about kernel weight, how heavy the kernels are, and then how many kernels there are in plants. Those are the yield components of corn, right? When we talk soybeans, we don't really talk about much, right? So what we started doing though, is we started looking at varieties that have high pod counts, high bean number, or varieties that have heavy beans. Because at the end of the day, the yield components on beans are similar. It's how many beans you have, how many plants there are, and then how heavy those beans are. And just like corn, some varieties have big seed, some varieties have small seed. Talk about seed weight. Um, let's, let's start there. And you, you guys have been doing a lot of research the last couple of years. We've got more of it here this year. We're going to see some more results this winter. But why don't we learn from seed weight and I guess in the research trials you're doing? Yeah, so it, it's pretty interesting, right, that we see a big variance. You know, even think of the spring when you're going out to your planter and you get one of those bags and they're 30 kilos. They're yep. huge, right? And then you get the next variety and it's only 19. Well, that's genetics, right? Certain genetics have heavy seed and some have less seed. So we had a site last year where we actually took seed weights of all the varieties and we saw that 53% of the yield was explained by how heavy those beans were. Once we have a population and we have a seed weight and a yield, we can estimate how many pods a plant would have, right? We just do the math backwards and we use a factor saying, you know, there's 2.2 seeds per bean pod. Now, sure, some varieties have four, but it's just a, it's kind of a thought process, right? Like varieties with lots of beans and varieties with fewer beans, but really heavy beans, right? And last year we saw the big beans take the, take it at the end of the day. Yeah. What about pod count? Let's go, let's talk a little bit more about those pods. Um, you know, you, you say that the bean weight took the took the race last year. What about pod counts uh, um, and uh, how does that factor? So we look at pod counts, right? And we actually talk a lot of, you're, you're setting up yield earlier, right? Like we're putting on pods already, you know, late June, you know, into June, July, August, and then, you know, late August and September, we start packing those pods with beans. So if we have a variety that has, you know, a genetic capacity to pump more pods out early, then, you know, it's setting a little bit more yield early versus those varieties that have ability to pump really big beans. That's a later story, right? We're packing those beans full, R3, R4, you know, that's later in the season, right? So what we're seeing is, you know, in this case, some places this year, I'm seeing those varieties that tend to have more pods win a few plots because we were a little dry late August and then September, right? And we're seeing those varieties that potted up real well hold their yield, those varieties that needed the big beans, they're in the game, but they're not, you know, they're not blowing stuff out of the water yeah. like they were last year. Henry, you said last year, 53% of yield variation, um, basically explained by the weight of the bean. Um, pods, 12%. Is that typical or are you seeing something different this year? Well, so I think, you know, we haven't crunched those numbers yet, Bern. Like we're just getting into the research plots, hopefully wrap them up soon here. And then we can start doing, you know, our fall, winter number crunching. But it's looking like pods are maybe winning this year. So I'm assuming, you know, assuming and getting ahead of myself, but maybe we'll see more of the yield variation actually explained by, you know, pod count this year versus bean, bean weight like last year. Yeah. That's, what, that's what I'm thinking so far. Let's talk about next year and, you know, how we, you know, manage, you know, uh, our soybean crop. We select varieties. You know, when it comes to, to bean weights, um, what should we be thinking there when we're making selections and management decisions? I think it's kind of like a risk management strategy, right? No, no different than corn where we pick maybe one of each or if we know we really excel at, you know, one kind of style of hybrid, no different, there might be a certain variety that works for you. What I've seen a lot, droughty guys, guys that run out of moisture later in the season, you know, the bean number, you know, the 
big pod count varieties seem to be more consistent. You know, we see that with, you know, Maris or our ocelots. You know, we have a bunch of these varieties, you know, cyclones that just consistently put on a lot of pods, right? Whereas when we go into like an avalanche or a viper, you know, we start seeing that, you know, there's not as many beans there. They rely a lot on really big beans. Then, you know, those guys, that really fertile ground, where they're always adequate moisture, those ones really take take it there, right? That's where I'm positioning those. Now, if you have a bit of everything, it's probably good to have one of each, right? That's kind of the strategy I look for when we talk about positioning beans. And no differently when we're selecting new varieties, it's about keeping diversity in the portfolio, right? If we all go one way, mm -hmm and the year goes the other way, we could look bad, right? Yeah, it's just the old corn, you know, you don't want all race horses, you don't no, want all horses, right. right? No, that's right, that's right. So Henry, hey, final question, that is, you know, different management strategies, agronomy strategies, how do you layer those over this decision? Well, that's a great question, Burn. right? We're doing a lot of research on sulfur, on fungicides, on planting date, you know, base fertility at Mazex. And we're seeing, you know, we kind of pick one variety we think fits this category, you know, pod count, and then one that's got big beans. And we kind of, you know, we manage them the same and we see if there's more response one way or the other, right? A fungicide, when we're fungiciding in the back half of the season, we expect a variety that can pump big beans would benefit maybe more from that than a variety that has a lot of pods. Mm -hmm. Whereas sulfur, you know, getting that plant going early, that actually might benefit a pod number variety because it's setting that yield earlier. Now, not to say that agro agronomics of a variety aren't gonna come into play. You might have a big bean with lots of pods, but it needs a fungicide cause of mold, right? Yeah. Or you have, you know, there's lots of, you can't fit every bean in every box. There's some that, you know, are in the middle. So a little bit of everything helps them, right? But I think it's just trying to fine tune that agronomy and see what works to just push those beans to the next level. And if we can dial it in by variety or even by soybean type, I think that can give us a little bit of an edge burn. Awesome, great stuff. Hey, um, I'm, I'm assuming lots of the details and more research to share this winter? For sure, we'll have lots of research this winter. We'll have our annual agronomy summary, right? Yeah. And our agronomy meeting. So it's gonna be really good, Burn. Perfect, sir. Um, thanks for stopping by. Always great to have you on the trip. Thanks, Burn. I appreciate it.